Today, uh, I want to talk about a key word and a doctrinal word that I think has become the catch word in the Church of Nazarene today. And I think it's the subject of most songs, and it's a truth. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to take away from the word love. I'm not going to take away from its importance because it's a crucial truth at the center of the gospel. If you don't have this truth, uh, you're off base, okay, totally. And um, it's one of the two gospel axioms. It's that important. It's at the center of the gospel. But if we only focus on that side, and you've, if you've been in any waiting school before this, you know that this is a theme with me. You'll hear this over and over again. But you need to understand that God is also a God of wrath. And I think those two concepts, love and wrath, the full picture who God is, equals ultimately his essence and if you want to know what that whole essence is as the scripture says holy be holy because he's holy this is the idea of holiness that we're speaking about and so today i want to talk to you about the bad side of love i actually shared this at waiting school uh, 12 in california but i didn't finish it and then uh, i was preparing a new session for this one but i kind of ran out of time i'm a new dad it's not working out very well trying to get ready for waiting school. I'm trying, but it didn't work. And then God called me to intercessory prayer, which has just thrown me for a loop. But anyway, so I got about 15 slides in a new one. If I get to it at the end, I'll try to throw some of those in. But here we go on the uh, bad side of love. You can go ahead to the next slide. What I did here at the beginning of this, I labeled some of the people that are key figures that came only new figures. Now, this is unusual for me. I am a person who believes in holiness old school. I believe that we need to hold to what we were formed in, what we began with, the understanding we began with. But today, you're gonna come, I'm coming from a different perspective than I usually do. I usually will come from W.B. Godby or somebody from the past, and I'll start talking to you about their perspective. But what I'm going to do today is I'm not even going to start in our own tradition. I'm going to be talking to you from the newer people and those that God used, whether they're from our tradition or not, who they've been giving us warning signs, kind of like end times warnings, but warning signs that love can be misused. Okay? So the first one that we hear, uh, at least in recent times, was Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And uh, some people, most people would probably just read his book because it's a classic book already, you know, and uh, he didn't live that long. He was a martyr, you know, and he died in uh, Germany, and he was underneath the Hitler problem and being a person of peace it's kind of radical that he was one that they found this is the reason he died in the Flossenburg concentration camp they found that he was associated with the conspirators that wanted to kill Adolf Hitler I don't know how that all works out with being a Christian and so forth but but the, this was his idea and I, I think that God you know, was in his life there's no question but if you want to just boil it down what was his contribution to the subject I'm talking about it's two words he said in our society today, Christianity, and, and he knew, because Germany was, if you want to look where we're going to go, go to Germany. If you, you know, go back in history, study Germany, and their understanding of liberal Christianity, and all the liberal thoughts that came out of them, and you'll know where we're going, okay? And this is exactly what he understood, and he said, cheap grace, that was his phrase, cheap grace has run amok, in, in the words of a more modern scholar, in American Christianity. And so he was contributing to that, but... I told you he is a member of the confessional church, which is a Ju German Lutheran uh, tradition. They don't believe in sanctification the way we did. So what I want to do with each of these persons is I want to tell you what they contributed to us, but I also want to tell you what hindered them from seeing the whole picture, okay? Because God's been trying to draw us back to the uh, Pentecostal understanding. I'm not talking about our modern usage of that. I'm talking about Pentecost, our understanding of holiness, which he gave to the church, okay? And how we have gone away from that, okay? And so this fellow sees that, but he doesn't see the whole picture because God d tends to do that. We need each other. He tends to give part to each well, somebody, and, and we need to use that. Well, this is what he gave us was the idea of cheap uh, grace, and he 